Chapter 24 Yellow Fang hauled herself out of her nest a few days after the gathering. Every muscle in her body protested. She felt as exhausted as if she had run all the way around the border three times. Why are you always so tired these days? Sage Whisker asked her as Yellow Fang forced herself to draw her paws over her ears in a sketchy grooming. And you're putting on weight, too. Maybe if you didn't eat so much, you would be able to do more. Maybe, Yellow Fang muttered. If I weren't a medicine cat, you would know what the problem is. But you'd never even begin to guess that I'm expecting kits. What am I going to do? Slipping out of the den, she stood at the edge of the clearing and watched her clanmates going about their duties. The apprentices were hauling a load of bedding out of the elders' den. As Yellow Fang watched, Flintpaw rolled up a ball of moss and hurled it at Nightpaw's head. Nightpaw batted it away. Stop being such a mouse brain, Flintpaw, he meowed. We'll never get finished that way. Flintpaw let out a yowl and hurled himself at Nightpaw. I'm a Wind Clan warrior, he screeched. The two apprentices wrestled together in the midst of the discarded bedding. Blackpaw, Clawpaw, and Fernpaw joined in with joyous mews, scattering moss everywhere. Yellowfang wondered if she needed to intervene, but she realized that Nightpaw, who was the smallest of the apprentices, was giving as good as he got, and the squabbling was basically good-natured. A moment later, Hollyflower, who was Blackpaw's, Flintpaw's, and Fernpaw's mother, strode across the clearing, grabbed Flintpaw by the scruff, and heaved him out of the fight. The other apprentices sat up with moss all over their pelts and identical disappointed expressions. What do you think you're doing? Hollyflower demanded. Clear this mess up right now and get it all out of camp. If you don't finish the elders' betting, there'll be no battle training later. I'll speak to your mentors myself. The threat was enough to send the apprentices scurrying to gather up the scattered moss and begin hauling it toward the tunnel. Hollyflower watched until she was sure they were all working, then turned toward the fresh kill pile. Lizard Stripe was just finishing off a blackbird. Her ears twitched as the apprentices bundled past her. You must be glad your kits are out of your paws and you can return to warrior duties, she remarked to Hollyflower. Hollyflower sighed, gazing after the apprentices who were heading into the tunnel with their burden of moss. But I miss them so much. They don't seem to need me at all now. Lizard Stripe grimaced as if she had accidentally taken a mouthful of crow food. Didn't you feel trapped while you were in the nursery? Missing patrols and the chance to hunt for your clan? Yellowfang saw Hollyflower's puzzled expression. Why would I feel trapped? Having kids to raise as warriors is the duty of every queen. Don't you think that's unfair? Lizard Stripe protested. Toms can hunt and fight all their lives and still have kits for the clan. Hollyflower reached out with her tail to give Lizard Stripe a friendly flick on the shoulder. I think that's tough on the Toms. Wait until you're expecting kits, Lizard Stripe. Then you'll feel differently. Actually, I don't, Lizard Stripe sniffed. Hollyflower let out an excited squeal. Oh, Lizard Stripe, you're expecting kits. That's fabulous. Are they mud claws? Lizard Stripe nodded. Yellow Fang didn't think she'd ever seen a prospective mother looking so unenthusiastic. You're probably just nervous, Hollyflower reassured her. Having kits will change your life. But I don't want my life to change, Lizard Stripe meowed with a lash of her tail. I like my life the way it is now. All I ever wanted was to be a warrior protecting my clan. Well, you'll be a warrior again once your kits become apprentices, Hollyflower pointed out. Her reasonable tones seemed to annoy Lizard Stripe even more. Six moons in the nursery? I'll go mad, she exclaimed. You'll be fine, and so will your kits, Hollyflower promised, seeming unable to believe that Lizard Stripe really meant what she said. We have two medicine cats now, don't forget. With an angry shrug of her shoulders, Lizard Stripe got up and stalked across the camp toward the warrior's den. Staring at her, Yellowfang realized that her belly did look swollen, a little more than her own. Two litters, neither of them wanted. The thought made her wince. Oh, kids, I do want you, she told the tiny lives growing in her belly. But things are going to be complicated. 
Yellow Fang wished that she could talk to Lizard Stripe, to confide in her about her worries, and share the experience of having kits for the first time. But Yellow Fang's secret was one she would have to bear alone. Besides, she and Lizard Stripe had never been friends. And I certainly can't tell Ragged Pelt. He's made it clear that my decision to become a full medicine cat means I can have nothing to do with him. At that moment, she spotted the tabby Tom hurrying from the warrior's den to Cedar Stars. She wasn't sure if he had seen her. He certainly didn't acknowledge her. Yellow Fang, why are you standing there as if you're half asleep? Yellow Fang jumped as Sage Whisker bustled out of the den behind her. We have to check Little Bird's cough, the medicine cat went on, and bring some ointment of yarrow to Stone Tooth for his cracked pads. And you promised to take Cloud Pelt into the forest again. It's too soon for him to be out unless there's an experienced cat to keep an eye on him. Sorry, Sage Whisker, Yellow Fang mewed. I'll see to the elders and then find Cloud Pelt. She set off for the elders' den, feeling utterly weary, her paws dragging as if they were made of stone. Sage Whisker patted after her. Don't forget the ointment of Yarrow, she prompted. Her eyes narrowed and she studied Yellow Fang more closely. Are you all right? she asked. You've been very tired recently. Medicine cats do get ill themselves, you know. Panic stabbed into Yellow Fang at the thought of Sage Whisker finding out the truth. What would she do? Strip me of being a medicine cat? Exile me from the clan? This is my home and my life. No, I'm fine, Yellow Fang replied, trying to put a spring in her step as she headed for the elder's den. Even if they're grumpy and difficult with leaf bear setting in, it's my duty to care for them. And I'll do that for as long as I'm allowed. Yellow Fang found herself standing in a dark, empty space. A few traces of starlight shone in the blackness above her head, too faint to be stars. She understood that she was dreaming, but she didn't know what the dream might mean. Is this Star Clan? she called. Is there anyone there? A moment later, a small, dark pelted cat padded out of the shadows. He gave Yellow Fang a long look and solemnly shook his head. There is a cat coming he meowed. A cat who should never be born, whose life will bring fire and blood to the forest. Yet Star Clan is powerless to stop him. Yellow Fang stared at him in horror. Is there nothing we can do? The dark cat dipped his head. Only one thing can stop the tide of hatred this birth-cursed cat will bring. The courage of a mother to know her destiny. Are you talking about one of my kits? Yellowfang gasped. What do you mean? Is this a prophecy? It is a warning, the dark cat whispered. He drew back into the shadows. Yellowfang sprang after him and woke up thrashing in her nest, with the walls of the den faintly visible as the sky paled toward dawn. Horror chilled her bones. She instinctively curled her paws around her swollen belly, desperate to protect the life within. There's no way my kits will bring bloodshed to Shadow Clan. It's not their fault that they're going to be born. For a moment, she considered describing the dream to Sage Whisker. But Silver Flame told me to trust my own instincts, and my secret would be in danger if I told her too much. Yellow Fang raised her eyes to the few warriors of Star Clan who still shone in the dawn sky. Star Clan, I speak these words before you, she whispered. I vow to my kits that I will do everything I can to protect them. I'm sorry that I won't be the mother they might have hoped for, the mother they deserve, but I will always love them. The last leaves fell from the trees. The weather was not as harsh as the previous leaf bear, but the days were cold and endlessly wet, and none of the cats ever felt warm or dry. Life in the clan seemed to slow down, with warriors only emerging to hunt or patrol, though no cat expected enemies to attack in such foul weather. 
One morning, Yellow Fang lay at the mouth of her den, watching Ragged Pelt sorting reluctant warriors into patrols under the perpetual drizzling rain. Cloud Pelt, fully recovered now, was among them, the only cat who seemed to have any energy as he leaped and splashed through the puddles in the clearing. You did well to heal the young warrior, Sage Whisker came to join Yellow Fang at the mouth of the den. He was strong enough to heal himself, Yellow Fang responded feeling uncomfortable and fat under her thick pelt. For a moment, the medicine cat was silent. Then she gave Yellow Fang a nudge. Come on, let's go for a walk. I haven't been out of the camp for days. Unwilling but not daring to show it, Yellow Fang heaved herself to her paws and padded beside Sage Whisker out of the camp, following the departing patrols. She noticed how much the old medicine cat was showing her age, gray around the muzzle and stiff in her hind legs when the weather was damp. A pang of concern shook Yellow Fang. Sage Whisker had been Shadow Clan's medicine cat for as long as she could remember, a source of skill and comfort for her clan, and it was hard to think of her getting old. I must make sure she eats some herbs to help her pains. She needs me to take care of her, even if she doesn't want it. Yellow Fang and Sage Whisker ducked through the dripping brambles and headed out into the marshes. I like the open spaces when it rains, Sage Whisker meowed. I can't stand it when rain splashes on my neck from the trees. Pausing at the edge of the marshland, she took in a deep breath. It's bleak out here, but I love this part of the territory, she told Yellow Fang. I'm a Shadow Clan cat to my bones and I'm glad Star Clan made sure I was born here. Yellow Fang murmured agreement, but her attention was mostly fixed on the wriggling in her belly. Suddenly, one of her kits kicked her so hard that she let out an involuntary gasp. Sage Whisker turned to her. Come and sit here on this clump of grass. As Yellow Fang obeyed, she gave her a long look. How long to go? she asked. Yellow Fang stared at her in dismay. You know, she whispered. I'm a medicine cat, Sage Whisker replied. I've delivered more kits for Shadow Clan than you've eaten mice. Of course I know. Are you angry? A little, Sage Whisker admitted. You made vows, and you've broken them. No, Yellow Fang protested. Ragged Pelt and I haven't been together since I was made a full medicine cat at the Moonstone. Sage Whisker flicked her tail. You're splitting whiskers, Yellow Fang. You know that you shouldn't have been with Ragged Pelt when you were a medicine cat apprentice. But that's not the most important thing, she went on. Shadow Clan needs you. I will walk with Star Clan soon, and you have to take my place. You have a rare gift. And you've thrown it away. No, I haven't, Yellow Fang insisted. I'll deal with this, I promise. I won't stop being a medicine cat. I just need to figure out what to do. Her voice trailed off. Sage Whisker's gaze was stern. It's time you made a decision once and for all, she mewed. If you're to walk the path of a medicine cat, there must be no more turning aside. The clan must come first. Yellow Fang nodded miserably. I know. It will from now on. Sage Whisker reached out with her tail and stroked Yellow Fang's shoulder, a rare gesture of affection. You poor thing, she whispered, startling Yellow Fang. May Star Clan light your path. Her tone became brisk again as she continued. Does Ragged Pelt know? Yellow Fang shook her head. You should tell him, Sage Whisker meowed. If the kits are going to live, then he deserves to know. Of course they're going to live, Yellow Fang cried. Does she think I would kill my own kits? Then they will need their father more than ever, Sage Whisker told her. They can't lose both their parents. Yellow Fang nodded. I know you're right, but it will be hard to tell him. How will I ever find the words? And what will he do when he knows the truth? Later that day, Yellow Fang was back in the camp, 
busy covering the herb stores with more fern to keep the rain out. Sage Whisker bustled into the den and took the fern frond she was holding. I'll do that, she mewed. Ragged Pelt isn't on patrol. Go and tell him. More gently, she added, You have to, you know that. Yellow Fang stared at her for a moment, then bowed her head. On reluctant pause, she dragged herself out into the clearing and saw Ragged Pelt gulping down a piece of prey by the fresh kill pile. Can we talk? she asked, patting up to him. Ragged Pelt eyed her coldly. We have nothing to say to each other. Believe me, we do. Yellow Fang led Ragged Pelt into the forest, pushing through the undergrowth until the camp was out of sight. Then she faced him under the dripping trees. I'm going to have kits, she announced. She braced herself for the blast of Ragged Pelt's rage. Instead, the Tabby Tom's eyes widened in disbelief. That's not possible. Of course it's possible. The confusion in Ragged Pelt's eyes faded to be replaced with glowing happiness. I'm going to be a father, he breathed. Yellow Fang, that's great. Our kids will be the best warriors and queens the clan has ever known. One of them might become clan leader one day. But Yellow Fang tried to interrupt. Even Ragged Pelt's anger might have been better than this total refusal to see what the problem was. I'll be the best father, he went on enthusiastically. I'll teach them battle moves and show them the best places to hunt. But I'm a medicine cat, Yellow Fang made him listen at last. I'm not supposed to have kits, Ragged Pelt blinked at her. Well, you'll have to stop being a medicine cat. I can't, Yellow Fang choked. Ragged Pelt's voice grew dangerous. Can't or won't. Both, Yellow Fang admitted. I will bear these kits and love them with all my heart, but I cannot be their mother. You will have to raise them alone. I can't do that, Ragged Pelt yelped. How can I stay with them in the nursery and give them milk? Lizard Stripe is also expecting kits, Yellow Fang explained. She can care for hours until they are old enough to feed alone. Every cat can know that they are yours, but no cats must know they are also mine. She let out a long sigh. I'm sorry, Ragged Pelt. I cannot be their mother. Although she spoke briskly, inside Yellow Fang's heart was splitting into tiny pieces. This is the only choice I can make. I have to follow the path that Star Clan has laid out for me. The words of the small dark cat in her dream rang in her ears, warning her about the storm of fire and blood that would be released into her clan, but she pushed the memory away. There was no reason to believe that the black cat had been speaking of her kits. She didn't even know his name, or what clan he had once belonged to. Ragged Pelt will be a good father. My kits will be in safe paws. The warrior was staring at her as if he'd never seen her before. You mean you'd choose to be a medicine cat for clan mates that have no kinship with you over caring for your own kits? Our own kits? His voice rose to a screech. What kind of she-cat are you? Do you care for nothing beyond yourself? Yellow Fang tried not to crumple to the ground in despair. I have to do this, she muttered through gritted teeth. Our kits will not suffer because of it. What do you know about growing up with only one parent? Ragged Pelt snarled. Too late, Yellow Fang realized she had forgotten about his torment over his absent father. This will be different, she tried to protest. These kits will be cared for by Lizard Stripe in the nursery, and they will have you as their father to love and be proud of them. Please, you have to do this for them. Ragged Pelt glared at her as if she were nothing more than a rat. Very well, but on one condition, he mewed at last. You must promise never to tell these kids the truth. It is better that they grow up without a mother than knowing that their mother chose to abandon them. Yellow Fang's heart cracked a little more as she made the promise Ragged Pelt asked for. I will never abandon you, little ones, she whispered to her unborn babies. I will be with you, always. Chapter 25
Griping pains in her belly woke Yellow Fang, and she bit back a groan. She knew this time the agony was her own. It's time. I have to go. Sage Whisker will cover for me. Yellow Fang had already prepared the herbs she would need. Chervil root and a juniper berry, folded up in a couple of nettle leaves. She had hidden the leaf wrap in her nest, so no cats who came into the den would spot it. Now Yellow Fang dug the herbs out of the moss and headed for the mouth of the den. Sage Whisker was still asleep in her nest, and Yellow Fang didn't wake her as she stumbled into the clearing. Night covered the forest. A few stars showed through gaps in the clouds, but there was no moon. Yellow Fang was grateful for the darkness. She could just spot Blizzard Wing on guard beside the camp entrance because of his pale pelt but she knew that she could slink out unnoticed past the dirt place. Powerful ripples of pain passed through Yellow Fang's belly as she skirted the dirt place and headed through the trees. She had picked out the place where her kits would be born a few sunrises before, a dead tree across the border in the unknown forest. There, the border patrols wouldn't be able to scent her or come upon her unexpectedly. Whatever happens after this, she thought, I have to stay focused on my duties as a medicine cat. Nothing else matters. The clan will always need me more than my kits. As Yellow Fang crept into the hollow of the dead tree, she knew her kits were ready to be born. The hollow was full of dead leaves, and there was a smell of toadstools and something rotting. Not even Ragged Pelt would find her here. All Yellow Fang wanted was for the birth to be over, but she felt as if she was lying in that dead tree for days. Everything hurt, her whole body down to the tips of her fur and the ends of her claws. She told herself that she was a medicine cat, able to take care of herself, but she was too weak to do anything, even eat the herbs she'd brought. Finally, after a long night of darkness and anguish, there were three small bundles next to her on the pile of leaves. Two of them were squirming, One was completely still. Yellow Fang prodded it with her paw, trying to hide from herself what she knew very well. The kit had been born dead. Her eyes would never open. Yellow Fang dragged the other two, a tom and a she-cat, toward her. With all the strength she could manage, she began to lick them, trying to warm them and wake them up. The tom let out an angry wail the minute she touched him. The other only whimpered slightly and jerked her paws. I can see that Tom is going to be a fighter. He had his father's dark tabby pelt, with a broad, flat face and a tiny tail bent in the middle like a broken branch. His lungs were so powerful, Yellowfang was surprised his wails didn't bring the entire clan running to find them. He battered his sister with his paws every time he moved, but she barely reacted. Another dreadful certainty began to gather inside Yellow Fang. She tried as long as she could, licking and licking the weak she-kit, but her breathing only got shallower and shallower until finally it stopped altogether. Her tail twitched once and was still. Yellow Fang buried her nose in the tiny scrap of fur, feeling grief crash down on her. It was a clear sign from Star Clan. These are the kits I saw in the pool when I was in Star Clan with Silver Flame. But they should never have been born. Pulling herself out of her grief, Yellow Fang turned her attention to her only surviving kit and saw the expression on his small flat face. He was new to the world, couldn't see, could barely crawl to her belly to feed, and yet his face was already twisted with strong emotion. Rage? Hatred? I've never seen such a look on any cat, let alone a newborn kit. Fear flooded through Yellow Fang, making her shiver with cold. Maybe this kit wasn't meant to survive either, she thought. A kit born with so much anger in him could only mean trouble for the clan. Her fear surged higher as she remembered her dream and the dire warning spoken by the Black Star Clan cat. 
Is this the cat who will bring fire and blood to the forest? But then he squirmed over to Yellow Fang and pressed his face into her fur. He's so small, so helpless. He needs me. Desperately, she told herself that he was only a little kit, after all. Her kit, and the son of Ragged Pelt, the cat she loved. Yellow Fang licked the top of his head, and he let out a small purr. Her heart seemed to expand to fill her whole chest. How can I believe that any kit should not have been born? Leaving the tiny Tom in the hollow tree, Yellow Fang buried his sisters in the unknown forest, digging deep into the soil so that no cat or fox or badger would ever sniff them out. Then she returned to her one living kit. Silver Flame told me to trust my own instincts and make my own choices, she whispered to the tiny Tom, bending to lick his head. And I choose that you will grow up in the clan as a warrior without knowing who your mother is. She heaved a deep sigh. That will be best for both of us, little one. Giving him a last lick, Yellow Fang slunk back through the undergrowth, her fur matted and stinking of toadstools, the tom kit dangling from her mouth. Aware of how many questions would be asked, she stopped to clean herself in a pool near the entrance. By the time she and her kit entered the camp, no cat would have been able to guess the ordeal she had been through. Ragged Pelt spotted her the moment she pushed through the brambles. He barely even looked at her. His eyes were all for the kit, and they were full of hope and excitement. He came bounding across the clearing to follow Yellow Fang into the nursery. Lizard Stripe was there tending to her own two kits, born a few days earlier. Her pale brown tabby fur and white underbelly seemed to glow in the darkness of the nursery den. She looked at Yellow Fang with narrow, unfriendly eyes. Yellow Fang had never really liked or trusted Lizard Stripe, but she had no choice. Lizard Stripe was the only nursing queen at the moment. Yellow Fang dropped the kit at Lizard Stripe's paws, and he let out a furious shriek. What? growled Lizard Stripe. Is that? It's a kit, Yellow Fang replied. It's my kit. Ragged Star added proudly, shouldering his way into the den. Oh, yes, Lizard Stripe mewed. What a miracle. If I'd known Toms could have kits, I would have made Mudclaw have these brats of mine himself. Ragged Pelt ignored her. Yellow Fang thought that the space seemed to get smaller with him in it, as if he drew all the air into himself. She wanted to press herself into his fur and tell him everything she'd been through and about the two tiny bodies in the forest. The effort of holding back left her shaking inside, but Ragged Pelt still wasn't looking at her. He crouched and sniffed at his son. The kit tried to lift his head and then swiped his paw through the air, connecting with Ragged Pelt's nose. The tabby Tom jerked his head back in surprise. Look at that, he cried delightedly. He's a little warrior already. Lizard Stripe's amber gaze was making Yellow Fang uncomfortable. His mother wishes to keep her identity secret, Yellow Fang meowed. She cannot care for this kit, and she hopes that you will take him in for her. Lizard Stripe lashed her tail. What kind of mouse-brained nonsense is that? She snapped. Why should I have to put up with another mewling lump of fur? I didn't ask for these kits either, but you don't see me dumping them on some other cat. It's not my job to take care of every unwanted kid in the clan. Ragged Pelt snarled, and Lizard Stripe shrank back in her nest. He is not unwanted, Ragged Star hissed. He is my son, and I will always claim him as my own. You are being given a great honor, you unworthy cat. Who wouldn't want to be mother to the clan deputy's son, and perhaps the future leader of the clan himself? Lizard Stripe hissed softly, but she knew better than to argue with Ragged Pelt. Yellow Fang thought that perhaps she saw the wisdom of his words. As the queen responsible for Ragged Pelt's son, even if the clan knew she wasn't his real mother, Lizard Stripe would be a significant cat within the clan. All right, fine, she spat ungraciously. Give him to me. As Lizard Stripe nestled her son into the curve of her belly, 
Yellow Fang felt a strong pang of unease. What kind of life will he have with an ambitious queen like Lizard Stripe raising him? Am I making the biggest mistake of my life? His name is Broken Kit, she meowed, her voice faltering. Lizard Stripe nodded, stretching out a paw to touch the bend in his tail. That was where every cat would think his name came from. But Yellow Fang knew the truth. She named her son for the feeling in her chest as she left him there, as if her heart were cleaving in two, as if her life had broken down the middle. Yellow Fang staggered back to the medicine cat's den and curled up in her nest. Everything within her ached far beyond the reach of any herbs. Sage Whisker turned from hanging cobwebs on the thorns. Is it over? Yellow Fang raised her head a little and nodded. Yes, it's over, all over. Sage Whisker returned to the herb store and fetched a leaf, nudging it toward her. Parsley, Yellow Fang asked. The medicine cat nodded. It will dry up your milk. You should take one leaf every day. As Yellow Fang licked up the leaf, she added, You did the right thing. Yellow Fang didn't reply. All she could think of was her tiny son now suckling at Lizard Stripe's belly. She yearned for him, yet she couldn't help feeling afraid as she remembered the rage in his face when he had first been born. She couldn't ignore her fears that he was the kit that the black cat had mentioned in his terrible prophecy. But Yellow Fang hoped that by surrendering him, by giving him away to another cat, she had averted whatever doom her dream had foretold. The future will be different now, she hissed to Star Clan as she closed her eyes. Broken Kit is no longer my son. Chapter 26 I'll visit Lizard Stripe, Sage Whisker announced the following dawn. You can go out and collect moss. There should be plenty with all this rain. Her deliberate cheerfulness didn't lift Yellow Fang's spirits. She suspected that Sage Whisker was keeping her out of the nursery so that she couldn't see Broken Kit. As Yellow Fang headed across the clearing to gather moss, Bright Flower fell in beside her. Where were you yesterday morning? I looked for you and no cat knew where you were, she fretted. Are you okay? You don't look well. Yellow Fang ached to confide in her mother, but she knew how impossible that was. Oh, it was just medicine cat stuff, she mewed vaguely and I'm fine, just a bit tired. To her relief, Bright Flower looked reassured. I'm so proud that you're a medicine cat, she exclaimed. I have some news for you, she added after a moment. Nutwhisker has been spending a lot of time with Fernpaw recently, even though she's not his apprentice. I really hope he's ready to settle down with a mate. It will be so wonderful for him to father a litter of kits. Great. Yellow Fang meowed, trying to sound enthusiastic. Now, if you don't mind, I have things to do. She padded into the forest, trying to clear the scent of the camp from her head. She felt dazed, sore, and lost without the kits at her belly. My dear daughters, I will always grieve for you. And for you, my son. It was even more painful to think of Broken Kit, knowing that he was alive, but not with her. Sighing, Yellow Fang began collecting moss from under pieces of bark and around the roots of trees, making a pile of it beside a path ready to take back to camp later. As she worked, she drew closer to the training area. Through the trees, she could see all five apprentices practicing battle moves. Nightpaw, don't be such a weakling, Foxheart's voice rang out shrilly. Come on, I've shown you how to do that move before. Yeah, it's no fun fighting with you, Flintpaw added. Nightpaw's only response was a fit of coughing. Hearing it, Yellowfang dropped her moss and bounded through the trees until she reached the edge of the clearing. Enough, she ordered. Nightpaw is sick. Foxheart turned to glare at her. You should keep out of the training area, she snapped. You're only a medicine cat. This isn't training, Yellowfang retorted. It's illness. I'm taking Nightpaw back to the camp. Foxheart let out a hiss of annoyance. But there's nothing she can do to stop me. 
Yellowfang thought with satisfaction. Nightpaw recovered from his coughing fit and trotted over to her. Before he left, his brother Clawpaw touched his nose to the small apprentice's ear. Get well soon, he mewed. Yellowfang gave him a nod of approval. Clawpaw was a sturdy young cat, inclined to be a bit too rough, but always kind to his weaker brother. Nightpaw's cough eased as he and Yellowfang made their way back to camp. Passing her pile of moss, Yellowfang paused to collect a bundle. I can carry some of that for you, Nightpaw piped up. Yellowfang shook her head. No, you need to rest. I'll be fine, honestly, Nightpaw insisted. Please, I'd like to help. Yellowfang hesitated for a heartbeat and then gave in. Between them, they managed to carry about half what she had collected and made their way companionably back to the camp. Once in the medicine den, Yellowfang checked Nightpaw from nose to tail tip. She could hear wheezing in his chest, but his eyes were bright, his gums red, and his heart beat steady. There was no sign of fever. Well, you're a puzzle, she mewed at last. You haven't got white cough or green cough, but I don't know. Sage Whisker, she called as the old medicine cat came into the den. Will you have a look at Nightpaw? He was coughing, but there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with him. Sage Whisker examined Nightpaw, then shook her head. Very odd, she commented. Nightpaw, do you think you might have a fur ball? No, the apprentice replied. I'm sure I don't. Anyway, my pelt's so short that I don't get fur balls. Then maybe you just swallowed a seed or something, Sage Whisker concluded. I don't think you need any herbs. Just be sure to drink plenty of water. I will, Sage Whisker. Thanks, the apprentice turned to Yellowfang. I feel fine now. I'll collect the rest of that moss. When he had gone, Sage Whisker guided Yellowfang to her nest. You need to rest for a while, she mewed. Are you feeling okay? How is Broken Kit? Yellowfang asked, reluctantly settling down into the moss. There was a guarded look in Sage Whisker's eyes as she replied. He's fine. He's feeding well and already as strong as his new littermates. Something in the old cat's voice suggested she was holding back. There's something wrong, isn't there? Yellowfang demanded. What aren't you telling me? Sage Whisker sighed. Lizard Stripe doesn't seem entirely happy with the extra mouth to feed. Yellowfang snorted. Lizard Stripe didn't want kits in the first place. Sage Whisker nodded. I know, but it's too bad. That's the duty of a queen. Some queens shouldn't have kits, Yellowfang muttered. Inside, she was desperately worried about her son. I can't bear that he might feel unwanted and unloved. Sage Whisker seemed to guess what she was thinking. Yellowfang, you have to stay away from the nursery. Broken Kit needs to have a chance to bond with Lizard Stripe. Yellowfang took a short nap while Sage Whisker went out into the forest to search for herbs. She had just returned when Yellowfang awoke. I found more juniper berries, she meowed cheerfully, and a whole clump of borage leaves in a sheltered spot. I'd given up hope of more of those before New Leaf. They'll come in handy if Lizard Stripe doesn't have enough milk. Yellow Fang rose from her nest to help Sage Whisker sort the herbs, discarding the leaves that were too shriveled to be of any use. She was still involved in the task when Foxheart burst into the den. Her fur was bristling and her eyes hot with anger. Why do you have the apprentices running errands for the medicine cats? She snarled. Yellow Fang saw that Nightpaw was trailing behind his mentor with his mouth full of moss. Nightpaw was feeling well enough to help me, Yellow Fang meowed. Why is that a problem? You should have sent him back to training, Foxheart snapped. Just stay out of warrior business in future. She whipped around and stalked out of the den. Nightpaw dropped the moss onto the pile, gave Yellowfang an apologetic shrug, and trotted after his mentor. Seething with fury, Yellowfang clawed up the moss and tossed it toward the hollow where it was kept. Her aim was poor, but she didn't care. I'd like to claw that she-cat's face. She's so full of herself. Easy, Sage Whisker rested her tail tip on Yellowfang's shoulder. Go get a piece of fresh kill and calm down. Yellowfang flung a last ball of moss after the rest and stomped out of the den. 
Across the clearing, Foxheart was talking to Ragged Pelt, with a lot of bristling and tail waving. Complaining about me, I suppose, Yellowfang thought, as both cats cast glances toward her. Trying to ignore them, she padded over to the meager fresh kill pile and chose a shrew. As she ate, Rowanberry appeared beside her. Have you heard about that extra kit in the nursery? Her sister asked excitedly. Yes, I heard, Yellowfang replied brusquely. Every cat thinks he's Foxheart's, Rowanberry murmured into her ear. Look at her with Ragged Pelt. They're very close. Another stab of fury pierced Yellowfang. She wanted to yowl, No, Broken Kit is mine! But she made herself keep quiet and go on eating shrew. What sort of cat would give up her own kit? Rowanberry went on, sounding scandalized. A cat who's set on becoming deputy when Ragged Pelt is leader? Ashheart suggested, padding up with Frogtail. Foxheart has always been ambitious. She probably thinks having a kit would let another cat steal her chance. She turned to her clanmate. What do you think, Frogtail? I don't listen to gossip, Frogtail responded. If the kit is Foxheart, so what? It'll be an apprentice before long and have a mentor to take the place of its parents. He gave his tail a flick. If I were a she-cat, I wouldn't want to be stuck in the nursery either. Yellowfang abandoned her half-eaten shrew and withdrew to the medicine cat's den. What's wrong? Sage whiskered me out. The clan is gossiping about Broken Kit, Yellowfang told her. They all think he's Foxheart's. Sage Whisker looked mildly surprised. Well, it's better to have the clan think that Broken Kit's mother is a Shadow Clan cat and not a kitty pet or a rogue. Yellowfang sighed, knowing that was true. I don't have to like it, though. She curled up in her nest again, trying to sleep. But after two moons of having a full belly, now the emptiness kept her awake. A few sunrises later, Yellow Feng returned to the clearing with a mouthful of chervil root to see Lizard Stripe emerging from the nursery. Bright Flower padded over to Yellow Feng as she paused, wondering why Lizard Stripe was leaving her kits. The kits' eyes are open, Bright Flower reported, her eyes gleaming and Lizard Stripe is bringing them out for the first time. I hope it's not too soon, Yellowfang muttered. It's okay to be anxious. I'm a medicine cat. They'll be fine, Bright Flower assured her. It's such a beautiful day. Several cats had gathered around the nursery to see the kits come out. Rowanberry was there with Nutwhisker and Russet Fur, while Ashheart and Wolfstep stood a little farther off. All three elders watched from the entrance to their den. Deer Kit and Tangle Kit bounced into the open first, only to halt and gaze around them, their eyes wide with curiosity. Running Kit, who was the smallest of the litter, followed them more slowly, pausing in the nursery entrance while he sniffed several times. Then he suddenly decided to join his brother and sister, dashing out into the clearing and stumbling over his own paws. Murmurs of admiration and amusement arose from the cats watching, and more of the clan strolled up. Mudclaw joined Lizard Stripe, who was licking a paw and drawing it over her ears, her eyes glinting as she heard the clan praising her kits. Maybe she'll be proud of them after all, Yellowfang thought, staying at the back of the crowd as she looked for Broken Kit. He tumbled out of the nursery, a heartbeat later, and stood blinking in the sunlight, his dark tabby pelt bristling. Even though he was slightly younger, he was just as big as the others. He's a fine kit, Yellowfang heard Mousewing commenting. Deerleap nodded. He should make a strong warrior one day. Yellowfang wanted to enjoy the praise of her kit, even though she couldn't acknowledge it. But there was no real warmth in the warrior's words. They don't like the fact that no cat knows who his mother is. Amberleaf padded up a moment later. Does he look like a rogue to you? She whispered, confirming Yellowfang's suspicions. If Foxheart is his mother, why not say so? Mousewing muttered agreement. I wouldn't have said he's half kitty pet, but then look at his father. Remember what they said about Ragged Belt when he was born. Not wanting to hear any more, Yellow Fang turned to leave, but Little Bird padded up and stopped her. You haven't come to see me for a while, she mewed. Yellow Fang fought with guilt. She had deliberately avoided the elder in case Little Bird realized she was expecting kids. I've been busy, she replied. Too busy for your old friends? Little Bird pressed. 
Beckoning Yellowfang with a flick of her ears, she led the way to a sunny spot away from the other cats and settled down with her paws tucked underneath her. Lots of kits, she commented. Good for the clan, but not so good in Leaf Bear. Lizard Stripe seems to be managing, Yellowfang pointed out. The elder's eyes were slitted against the sunlight, but Yellowfang still felt as if Little Bird was scrutinizing her. What about that extra kit? Little Bird prompted. Where do you think his mother is? Yellowfang looked away. I have no idea. As long as Lizard Stripe is willing to raise him, does it matter? I think every kit deserves to know where they come from, Little Bird meowed. I would have thought Ragged Pelt would believe that more than most. Yellowfang suddenly grew tired of the hints and comments. Well, it's none of our business, she snapped. You're a medicine cat, Little Bird commented in surprise. Everything the clan does is your business. But perhaps some secrets are best kept, Yellowfang whispered. Chapter 27 the half moon appeared fitfully through scattered clouds as Yellowfang toiled up the last slope toward Mothermouth. The other medicine cats were already waiting for her in the entrance to the tunnel. Yellowfang approached them nervously, worried that their experienced eyes would be able to detect signs of her recent kidding. I wish Sage Whisker had been able to come instead of me. But Sage Whisker was suffering from pains in her legs and deep inside her belly so severe that Yellowfang had to struggle to block them out. The journey to High Stones would be too much for her, and Yellowfang wondered if the old medicine cat would ever travel there again. But there was no need for Yellowfang to feel nervous. When she padded up to her fellow medicine cats, their greetings were friendly, except for Goosefeather, who was muttering into his chest fur as usual, hardly aware of his surroundings. You look tired, Brambleberry mewed to Yellowfang. Is there sickness in Shadow Clan? Yellowfang shrugged, trying not to show how relieved she was that Brambleberry had given her an excuse for her weariness. Just the usual leaf bear stuff, she replied. Nothing we can't cope with. That's good to hear, Featherwhisker murmured, with that oddly curious look that Yellowfang knew well. And everything else is going well for Shadow Clan? Everything's fine, Yellowfang told him. Isn't it time we were heading for the Moonstone? We know that! Goosefeather snapped at her. Young cats think they have to teach their elders to eat mice. He lapsed into his mumbling again. Come on, Goosefeather, Brambleberry meowed kindly, laying her tail on the old cat's shoulders. Let's you and I lead the way. She padded into the tunnel with Goosefeather by her side. Wanting to avoid any more of Feather Whisker's probing questions, Yellow Fang fell into step beside Hawkheart leaving the second ThunderClan medicine cat to bring up the rear. How are you finding life as a medicine cat? Hawkard asked her. It took me a while to forget that I wasn't a warrior anymore. Me too, Yellowfang agreed, remembering the battle with the rats. It helps if I remember that I'm more used to my clan where I am now, Hawkard went on, his voice warm and friendly in the darkness. Every cat has the potential to be a warrior, but only a few of us can be medicine cats. That's true, Yellowfang acknowledged. When I look at a wounded cat, Hawkheart went on, I try to imagine how the wound was caused. That's often a help in knowing the best treatment. Oh, I get that, Yellowfang meowed, beginning to relax and enjoy the talk. Like whether it was teeth or claws or a sharp bit of a branch. Right, Hawkheart agreed. Sometimes, he broke off. Ahead of them, Goosefeather had halted suddenly, and Yellowfang had to take a pace back to avoid bumping into him. I'd never hear the end of it if I did. Hawkheart stumbled into her, thrown off balance by the sudden change in direction. Sorry, he muttered, then added, Is that parsley I can smell on you? Yellowfang's belly clenched. She had forgotten that she might be carrying the scent of the herb she used to dry up her milk. Mouse dung! I should have rolled in some ferns or something on the way here to hide the scent. I'm surprised you still have stocks of that in Leaf Bear, Hawkart continued as they set off again down the passage. Yellowfang couldn't think what to say. I guess we're lucky, she mewed after a moment. I found a sheltered clump just the other day. 
She sent a silent prayer of thanks to Star Clan that they reached the cave of the Moonstone at that moment. The moon was already shining through the hole in the roof, waking a frosty light in the heart of the stone. There was no more time for talking. Yellow Fang closed her eyes and leaned her muzzle against the cool surface of the crystal. Every muscle in her body ached with fatigue. Sage Whisker and I would never let a queen leave the camp so soon after kidding. Gratefully, she sank into sleep. A warm breeze ruffled Yellow Fang's pelt. She jolted awake to find herself on a sunlit stretch of marshland. The sound of trickling water filled the air, and unseen birds sang overhead. A feeling of being watched crept over Yellow Fang as she lay enjoying the sunlight on her fur. Sitting up, she noticed Silver Flame beside her, gazing at her with eyes that were soft with sympathy. Oh, Yellow Fang, she murmured. You knew, didn't you? Yellow Fang demanded with a snarl. The night sage whisker made me a full medicine cat. I saw the reflection of three kits behind me. Why didn't you tell me what was going to happen? Silver Flame sighed. What good would that have done? I couldn't change your future. Better that you didn't grieve before it happened. I should have stopped seeing Ragged Pelt, Yellow Fang protested. Silver Flame regarded her gravely. It was already too late, and not even the medicine cat code was strong enough to make you do that. Yellow Fang sprang up and started to pace, sending lizards and frogs skittering from her paws. Is it my imagination, she wondered, or is the breeze turning colder? Silver Flame, what else do you know about the kits? she asked, turning back toward the Star Clan cat. Do you know a small cat with black fur? Has he said anything to you? Is he from Shadow Clan? A small black cat? Oh, you must mean Mole Pelt, Silver Flame hesitated, and Yellow Fang wondered if she was hiding something. Mole Pelt was the Shadow Clan medicine cat many, many seasons ago. He makes little sense at the best of times, Silver Flame mewed. He is treated with kindness, but it doesn't always pay to listen too closely. He told me that a kit will be born that will bring fire and blood to the forest, Yellow Fang hissed, her voice shaking. Why would he tell me if it wasn't one of my kits? There's something about broken kit. Yellow Fang choked on the rest of her words as Silver Flame swept her tail across her mouth. A mother says nothing bad about her kits, the Star Clan warrior warned. If you do not love them, who will? But I can't be a proper mother to Broken Kit, Yellow Fang meowed wretchedly. No, because you are a medicine cat, and your clan must always come first. Silver Flame took a pace toward Yellow Fang, and there was warmth in her gaze. But that doesn't mean you cannot be his friend, and a force for good in his life. Don't give up on him, Yellow Fang. You could be his only hope. As Silver Flame finished speaking, the marshland around her started to fade, and Yellow Fang knew she was waking up. Wait, she cried. Where are my daughters? Are they here? Silver Flame was already no more than a glimmering outline. But as Yellow Fang stared around, she caught a glimpse of two tiny, pale shapes watching her from a clump of grass. My precious kids. Yellow Fang's heart began pounding in her chest. She tried to run to the kits, but instead of moving toward them, she felt her legs paddling against cold, hard stone. She opened her eyes to find herself back in the cavern, fresh waves of grief surging over her until she could barely stop herself from screeching aloud. As she and the other cats rose to their paws, preparing to leave, Brambleberry padded up to Yellow Fang. Bad news? she murmured into Yellow Fang's ear. Yellow Fang shook her head. Sad dreams, that's all, she replied. Yellow Fang slipped out of camp before the dawn patrols had left. Pale light was trickling through the trees, but shadows still lay deep among the undergrowth. Dew clung to every blade of grass and cobweb. Fluffing up her fur against the chill, Yellow Fang suppressed a yawn. The weather would warm up later in the day, and here and there she could spot a hint of green on the branches. With new leaf not far off, she was out early every morning, 
searching the forest for the herbs the clan needed so badly after the cold of leaf bear. She would dig carefully through the leaf mold to find the tiniest shoots, clearing away debris so that they could reach the sunlight and bringing back what she could. The sun dazzled her eyes by the time Yellow Fang returned to camp. She had found a few precious comfrey leaves and tansy to soothe Nightpaw's persistent cough, as well as a few blackbird feathers for Sage Whisker's nest. As Yellow Fang approached the camp, the first hunting patrol emerged from the tunnel. Ragged Pelt was in the lead, with Foxheart beside him, followed by Mudclaw, Deer Leap, and Russet Fur, who gave Yellow Fang a friendly wave of her tail as she passed. Ragged Pelt and Foxheart were talking together. Foxheart broke off to give Yellow Fang a scornful glance as they passed by. Ragged Pelt didn't even look at her. Yellow Fang sighed as she plodded on toward the camp entrance. If they go on like that, they'll only fuel the rumors that Broken Kid is Foxheart's. I'd have chosen any other queen in the clan to be his mother. Emerging into the clearing, Yellow Fang spotted Lizard Stripe in a warm patch of sunlight near the fresh kill pile, sharing tongues with Nettle Spot and Ashheart. There was no sign of her kits. Yellow Fang assumed they were in the nursery, but as she approached her den, she heard shrill squeaking coming from behind it. Peering around the boulders, she found Deer Kit, Tangle Kit, and Running Kit, all surrounding Broken Kit, who faced them with his dark tabby fur fluffed up. We don't want to play with you! Deer Kit squeaked, screwing up his nose. You smell funny. Yeah, Tangle Kit added. Every cat says you're a kitty pet like your father. My father is not a kitty pet, Broken Kit yowled, lashing out with one paw. Tangle Kit leaped back to avoid the blow. Broken Kit was bigger and stronger than the others now. Running Kit and Deer Kit shrank away from him too. My father is the clan deputy. He's the best warrior in Shadow Clan, Broken Kit spat. But who's your mother? Running Kit asked with a sniff. Even you don't know. Yeah, she could be anyone, Deer Kit mewed. A rogue? A kitty pet? A badger? Badger stinky, badger stinky! The other two kits joined in. Badger stinky! Yellow Fang dropped her herbs and feathers and strode into the middle of the group. Enough! She exclaimed, glaring around at Lizard Stripe's kits. Deer Kit, Tangle Kit, Running Kit, you ought to be ashamed of yourselves. How dare you treat your clanmate like this? Running Kit had the grace to look ashamed, staring down at his paws and sniffling wretchedly. Deer Kit and Tangle Kit just looked defiant, though they didn't dare say anything to a medicine cat. Broken Kit, come with me, Yellowfang meowed. She curled her thick tail around him and swept him away. Broken Kit stomped crossly beside her. Now they'll think I'm scared of them. I could have beaten them if you hadn't turned up. They're so weak. I don't care if there's three of them and only one of me. Yellowfang felt confused. She'd expected her kit to be grateful that she'd rescued him from the bullies. Well, fighting isn't the answer to everything, she told him. Your littermates need to learn how to behave. I'll tell Lizard Stripe and she'll punish them. Broken Kit ran in front of her and turned to face her, his eyes wide and pleading. Please don't do that, he begged. Lizard Stripe will only blame me. She doesn't like me. She thinks I'm stealing milk from her kits. Of course she doesn't think that, Yellowfang exclaimed, shocked. Yes, she does, Broken Kid insisted. I heard her saying it to Amberleaf. Nobody likes me. Yellowfang's heart twisted with love and regret. I like you, she mewed. And so will all your clanmates once they get to know you. Now, why don't you help me collect all these herbs and feathers and carry them into my den? You're so strong, you probably don't need me to help you. Broken Kit's chest puffed out proudly as he collected as much as he could manage, scattering a few leaves and feathers as he marched into Sage Whisker's den. Sage Whisker was curled in her nest. She raised her head in surprise as the kit appeared, followed by Yellow Fang. Shouldn't he be playing with his litter mates? She asked Yellow Fang. Yellow Fang knew that the old cat was giving her a warning. She didn't reply, just showed Broken Kit where to put down his burden. My littermates are stupid, Broken Kit snorted. Yellow Fang's my friend now. Yellow Fang could feel the heat of Sage Whisker's gaze on her fur, but refused to share the old cat's concern or even acknowledge it. What harm am I doing? Broken Kit, would you like to help me fetch some clean moss? 
Broken Kit nodded, bouncing on his paws. I can carry more moss than any cat, he boasted. Yellow Fang knew that she couldn't take him out of the camp, but there were some pieces of bark behind the elder's den where moss grew. She led him across the clearing, aware of some startled glances from her clanmates. Now, you hold up the bark, she instructed Broken Kit, so I can peel the moss from underneath. Like this? Broken Kit burrowed under a piece of bark and sat up with it balanced on his head like an extra bit of pelt. Yellowfang mrowed with amusement. Not quite, she meowed. A squirrel might think that you're a tree and try to climb up you. Broken Kit let out a squeal. I'm a tree, I'm a tree. He jumped up and down until the bark fell off his head. Yellowfang showed him how to hold up the bark with one paw while she gathered the moss. When they had collected a good pile, they bundled it together, and Broken Kit helped her carry it back to her den. Admiring her son's sturdy body and gleaming fur, Yellow Fang glowed with pride. Why did I ever doubt his right to be born? He might grow up to be my apprentice, she thought, and work by my side for the rest of my life. That would be an even greater gift than being acknowledged as his mother. Chapter 28 The bright new leaf sun shone down as Yellowfang laid out a bundle of borage leaves and some coltsfoot to dry on the flat ground outside her den. Broken Kit was playing close by, sometimes pouncing on the end of her tail or batting a piece of moss into the air. Take that, Thunder Clan flea pelt, he growled, swiping at it with his paw. That'll teach you to stay out of the Shadow Clan camp. Look, Broken Kit. Yellowfang meowed. These leaves are called borage. They're good for treating cats who have a fever. And this is- Why are you telling me this stuff? Broken Kit interrupted. I'm not going to be a medicine cat. I'm going to be a warrior. Grrr, watch me pounce. He fell on the moss ball and shredded it to tiny scraps with his claws. Yellowfang watched him fondly. She knew that Sage Whisker didn't approve of the time Broken Kit spent with her rather than with his littermate. But I don't see why Broken Kit should be treated like an outcast when I can look after him and make him feel special. She twitched an ear at the sound of sniffling and looked up to see Running Kit crouched a few tail lengths away, gazing at her intently as she sorted the herbs. Hi, she mewed. Come and look if you want to. Running Kit started, his fur fluffing up in alarm. For a heartbeat, he hesitated, blinking anxiously, then with another huge sniff scampered off toward the nursery. Yellowfang shrugged, turning back to Broken Kit. In two more moons, her son would be apprenticed, and then she would hardly see him because he would be so busy training with his mentor. For a heartbeat, she felt a pang that he wouldn't be training with her as a medicine cat, but she consoled herself with the thought that he was clearly going to be a great warrior. Broken Kit bounced off to find another moss ball, and Yellowfang continued laying out her herbs until she saw a night pelt padding up. He had been made a warrior two sunrises before, and Yellowfang could see his pride by the way he walked and held his head high. But he was still coughing. I've tried everything. Herbs, honey, planning his choice of fresh kills so he never eats anything with feathers. But nothing works. Every time the young warrior exerted himself, he would start coughing and gasping for breath. Yellowfang could see his frustration as he came up to her, coughing again as he tried to speak. He looks tired and thin, when he should be young and strong like his littermates. Sit down, Yellowfang meowed. Just breathe gently. I'll get you some wet moss. There must be some way of fixing this, Nightpelt rasped when she returned. Yellowfang shook her head. No herbs will help, she told him as she set the moss down beside him. You just need to calm down and relax. I know, but it's not easy, Nightbelt retorted. For all his troubles, there was no anger in his voice. He was still friendly and good-humored. I mentioned you to Hawkheart at a recent half-moon gathering, Yellowfang went on, as Nightbelt gratefully lapped the water from the moss. He said that a wind clan cat had the same symptoms, coughing after running around, but without any signs of a fever or sickness. Hawkheart didn't have a name for it. It was just something the cat had to live with. Nightpelt looked up apprehensively. And what happened to the cat? 
Yellow Fang half wished she hadn't brought the subject up, because there wasn't any good news to give the young warrior. He was unable to do all his warrior duties, and had to retire to the Elder's Den early, she admitted. I'll never do that, Nightpelt exclaimed. I want to be a warrior. Shadow Clan deserves that. Yellow Fang stretched out her tail to rest it comfortingly on Nightpelt's shoulder. Shadow Clan doesn't expect its cats to work themselves to the bone when they're not fit enough. Now sit down and be quiet until you can breathe normally. Sage Whisker bustled out of the medicine cat's den, thrusting Broken Kid in front of her. Her blue eyes were snapping with annoyance. Yellow Fang rose and went to meet them. Is there a problem? I caught this kit taking moss from the store inside the den, Sage Whisker meowed crossly. As if we didn't have to work to collect it. Broken Kit gazed up at the old cat with defiance in his eyes. I wanted some to play with. You can always get more. Sage Whisker fixed Yellow Fang with a stern gaze, clearly expecting her to deal with him. Broken Kit, if you want moss, you know where to get some, Yellow Fang mewed. There's plenty behind the elders' den, but please don't take the moss from our store. Does Sage Whisker expect me to punish him? She wondered. He's only a kit. She was trying to figure what to do when Deer Kit and Tangle Kit tumbled out of the nursery and bounded across to Broken Kit. Still hanging out with the medicine cats? Deer Kit sneered. Old she-cats and a sick warrior are the only friends you've got. Tangle Kit padded forward until she was almost nose to nose with Broken Kit. What skills are you learning? She asked in a mock interested voice. How to dry herbs? Oh, our enemies will be scared. Yeah, I can just hear him in a battle, Deer Kit added. Come one step closer and I'll slap you with this leaf. Broken Kit's neck fur bristled up and he swiped at Deer Kit, catching him a blow on the nose. Deer Kit let out an outraged yowl. That hurt! And it serves you right, Yellow Fang snapped. Go back to the nursery until you learn how to be nice. The two kids trailed off, casting resentful glances behind them as they went. Don't listen to them, Broken Kit, Yellow Fang went on when they had gone. There's nothing wrong with... Broken Kit turned on her, anger flaring in his eyes. They're right. I'm not learning anything useful here. You're just a dumb old medicine cat, not a warrior. Why do you make me come here all the time? I don't make you... Shocked, Yellow Fang reached out her tail to him, but Broken Kit batted it away. Quit bugging me and leave me alone! With a furious hiss, he ran off. Yellow Fang stared after him miserably. What have I done? Perhaps it's for the best, Sage Whisker murmured in her ear. He needs to grow up as normal as possible, so that he's not singled out any more than he already has been. Yellow Fang rounded on her. What would you know? she demanded. He's my son. I'd do anything to stop him from being hurt. In the days that followed, Broken Kit avoided the medicine cat's den. Yellow Fang never gave up hope that he would come back. Every time she heard him outside, she would rush to the entrance, but he always turned away from her. Yet he was constantly alone. His littermates went on ignoring him, even Running Kit, who had never joined in the bullying since Yellow Fang had interrupted them. Watching Broken Kit wrestle with a stick in the middle of the clearing, Yellow Fang's heart ached for him. He was so strong and confident and handsome, even his crooked tail didn't show so much now that his fur had thickened. But he doesn't have any friends. Broken Kit never plays with the others. Yellow Fang was startled to hear her own thoughts spoken aloud. The voice was Amberleaf's. The dark orange she-cat was strolling past with Blizzard Wing on their way to join Ragged Pelt, who was sorting out the patrols near the camp entrance. Well, he's not like the others, is he? Blizzard Wing commented. But he's a strong young cat. He'll be fine once he's an apprentice. The two cats padded on out of earshot. Yellow Fang gazed after them, trying to comfort herself with the thought that Blizzard Wing was right. When the patrols had left, Ragged Pelt bounded over to where Broken Kit was playing and stood watching him. After a moment, Broken Kit realized that he was there and looked up. Try attacking with both paws at once, Ragged Pelt advised. If it was a real enemy, you'd need to leap on him with the full power of your claws. 
Broken Kit nodded and leaped on the stick again, smashing both paws down on it so that it splintered. Ragged Pelt gave him a nod of approval. Cedar Star had emerged from his den to watch the exchange between Ragged Pelt and his son. He looks very strong, he remarked to Ragged Pelt. Yes, he's ready to be an apprentice, Ragged Pelt responded proudly. Yellow Fang glimpsed a flash of trouble in Cedar Star's eyes as he studied Broken Kit battering the stick. Being an apprentice isn't just about being able to fight our enemies, he meowed. Broken Kit needs to learn the importance of patience, honor, and loyalty as well, just like any young cat. He'll have all of those, Ragged Pelt assured him. Just you wait. As Yellow Fang watched Broken Kit glowering over the pieces of stick, she tried to suppress the memory of Mole Pelt's dire warning. Broken Kit is going to be fine. A heart-wrenching cry from her den drove these thoughts from Yellow Fang's mind. She spun around and raced inside to find Sage Whisker sprawled on her side next to the herb stores, gasping in pain. In the same heartbeat, Yellow Fang felt a searing agony in her chest. For a moment, her heart seemed to stop, and she couldn't breathe. No, Sage Whisker. Using all the control she had taught herself, Yellow Fang fought through the pain and staggered to Sage Whisker's side. Hold on she begged. Please hold on, I'll help you. I can't, it's too much, Sage Whisker hissed through clenched teeth. Star Clan needs me now. What's happening? Bright Flower appeared at the entrance to the den and rushed across to Sage Whisker. At the same moment, Sage Whisker's whole body convulsed and then was still. Her clear blue eyes clouded over, gazing at nothing. Sage Whisker. Yellow Fang whispered. She hunts with Star Clan now, Bright Flower murmured, laying her tail across Yellow Fang's shoulder and drawing her away. She served her clan well, she meowed. No Shadow Clan cat will ever forget her. Yellow Fang nodded, but she was too stunned to say anything. She was aware of Bright Flower leaving the den, and a short while later, Cedar Star appeared. Yellow Fang watched in a blur as he stood beside Sage Whisker's body and dipped his head in a gesture of respect. Farewell, clanmate, he meowed. You were a good medicine cat and a good friend. May you continue to guide Shadow Clan as you walk in the stars. The elders followed the clan leader into the den and carried Sage Whisker's body into the clearing for the vigil. Yellow Fang stumbled after them numb with grief. The rest of the clan padded up, touching their noses to Sage Whisker's cold fur, quietly sharing memories of her as they gathered around. Yellow Fang crouched beside her mentor all the rest of that day and all night, while the stars whirled overhead. I'm sorry, Sage Whisker, she murmured. I'm so sorry for letting you down. I promise to uphold the code of the medicine cats until my very last breath, her voice cracked. I owe you so much. The sky was milky pale when the elders arrived to take Sage Whisker's body away for burial. Yellow Fang rose to her paws, feeling stiff and dazed after the long vigil. May Star Clan light your path, Sage Whisker, she mewed her voice ringing out over the camp as she spoke the ancient farewell for all lost clanmates. May you find good hunting, swift running, and shelter when you sleep. Then she stood back to let Little Bird, Stone Tooth, and Lizard Fang pick up the body. Little Bird paused beside her. You'll be a good medicine cat, she murmured kindly, just as Sage Whisker was. Shadow Clan is lucky to have you. Yellow Fang watched as the three elders bore Sage Whisker's body out of the camp. Oh, little bird, I wish I could believe you. Chapter 29 Night Pelt, you are an intelligent and dedicated warrior, Cedar Star meowed. I know that you will do your best to pass on these qualities to Broken Paw. Night Pelt dipped his head to the clan leader. I'll do my best, Cedar Star, he promised, his eyes shining with pride. 
He had hardly coughed at all through the apprentice ceremony. Broken paw! Broken paw! Yellow Fang's heart swelled with pride as the clan greeted her son by his new name. She felt a rush of relief, too, that Cedar Star had chosen Nightpelt as his mentor. Nightpelt was sensible and wise, and would teach Broken Paw that there was more to the warrior code than fighting. But she was disconcerted to see the shock in Broken Paw's face when Cedar Star named his mentor. He hesitated for a moment before padding over to Nightpelt to touch noses with him. She was even more worried when she heard him mutter to Deer Paw, How come I got this sick cat? That's so not fair. Yellow Fang was sure that Night Pelt must have heard him too, although he gave no sign of it. Deer Paw had been apprenticed to Cloud Pelt and Tangle Paw to Wolf Step. Both of them looked ready to burst with pride and excitement, and even Lizard Stripe looked pleased. In contrast, Broken Paw just stood glowering at his paws. It will be all right, Yellow Fang tried to tell herself. Once Broken Paw starts training, he'll realize how much Night Pelt has to teach him. She tried to put Broken Paw out of her mind as Cedar Star raised his tail for silence once again. I've got something important to do too, she thought, with a tingle of excitement in her paws. Running Kit looked excited as well, his eyes shining as he gazed at his clan leader. Come forward, Cedar Star called to Yellow Fang, beckoning her with his tail. As she stepped toward him, he went on. The last two moons have been hard without Sage Whisker, and I know that within Shadow Clan, our former medicine cat will be mourned forever. A murmur of agreement rose from the clan, and Yellow Fang felt a fresh pang of grief for the old cat who had taught her so much. But the line of Shadow Clan medicine cats will continue, Cedar Star announced, with a new apprentice, Running Kit, Yellow Fang. You have already proven yourself to be a skilled and loyal medicine cat. I know that you will pass on all your knowledge to Running Kit. I will, Cedar Star, Yellow Fang promised. Running Kit, the clan leader meowed. Do you accept the post of apprentice to Yellow Fang? Yes, Cedar Star. Running Kit's voice went up in an excited squeak, and he scuffled his front paws in embarrassment. Then from this moment, you shall be known as Running Paw. And the good wishes of Shadow Clan go with you, the clan leader finished. Running Paw! Running Paw! As his clan greeted him, Running Paw scampered over to Yellow Fang, gave a huge sniff, and then reached up to touch noses with her. Yellow Fang winced. The first thing I'll teach him will be to cure his own sniffles. I'll take you to the Half Moon Gathering soon to meet the other medicine cats, she whispered to Running Paw, who danced on the spot. As the cats separated, Lizard Stripe rejoining the warriors with a huge sigh of relief, Yellow Fang followed the other mentors and their apprentices out of the camp for their first tour of the territory. Running Paw bounced by her side. Will we see cats from other clans? He panted. What happens if we do? We might spot a patrol on the other side of the Thunderpath, Yellow Fang admitted. If we do, we greet them and go on our way. She hesitated, then added, Later, I'll teach you some fighting moves. You need to be able to defend yourself. But never forget that you're a medicine cat, not a warrior. You don't go looking for trouble, and you never, never attack first. Running Paw nodded seriously. I'll remember, Yellow Fang. As they toured the territory, Yellow Fang enjoyed seeing her apprentice's astonishment when he realized how big the forest was, which made her recall her own first exploration with Deer Leap. The sight of the carrion place shocked him, and he shivered when Yellow Fang told him about the battle with the rats. But never forget, Yellow Fang warned as they padded past at a safe distance. Rats are dangerous, but warriors are more dangerous, and medicine cats know just what to do for rat bites. Cobwebs for bleeding, right? Running Paw mewed. Right, but some wounds get infected. Marigold and horsetail are good for that. But best of all for rat bites is wild garlic or burdock root. Marigold, horsetail, wild garlic, burdock root. Running Paw muttered under his breath. Great Star Clan, there's a lot to learn. He halted, shocked, when they reached the Thunderpath with monsters roaring past. Mudclaw told us about it, he gasped, 
but I never thought it would be like this. Are those monsters dangerous? Only if you try to cross the Thunderpath, Yellowfang told him. I don't know why, but they never leave it. But we have to cross it to get to four trees, don't we? Yellowfang shook her head. There's a tunnel that goes underneath it, leading to a little bit of Shadow Clan territory that borders Thunder Clan and Wind Clan. Running Paw's eyes sparkled. So we could visit Thunder Clan territory? Great! We could, Yellowfang replied severely. But we're not going to, because we're too courteous and honorable to go wandering over another clan's borders without good reason. There's another tunnel, too, that leads directly onto Wind Clan territory over there. She waved her tail at the swell of moorland beyond the Thunderpath. And before you ask, no, Wind Clan warriors aren't just rabbit eating nuisances, even if that's what you've heard. But you don't need to be afraid of them, either. She felt a warm glow of pride as she added. Shadow Clan is a match for any clan. Yellow Fang started to look for herbs as they continued, to teach her apprentice what they looked like and what they were used for. But she hurried more quickly past the border with the two leg place, even though Running Paul wanted to linger. Do we ever go there? he asked, staring curiously at the sharp red two leg dens. I think it would be cool to meet a kitty pet. Yellowfang felt her fur bristle as she thought of Hal and the other kitty pets who had attacked the camp. No, it wouldn't be cool, she snapped. We don't go there, and they don't come here. We don't bother one another, and that's best for all of us. Okay, Running Paul blinked, looking slightly disappointed. Then he brightened up and pattered along beside Yellowfang as she headed back to the camp. As they approached the camp entrance, Yellowfang heard a voice raised angrily and flinched as she recognized that it was Broken Paws. But I want to! Why can't I? Rounding a bramble thicket, Yellow Fang came upon Broken Paw and Night Pelt glaring at each other. Broken Paw's fur was bushed out to twice his size, and his yellow eyes shone. Because we've done enough for one day, touring the whole territory, Night Pelt explained. We... He had to break off to cough the only sign that he was under stress, for his tone was calm and patient. But I want to learn battle moves, his apprentice insisted. Training will begin tomorrow. We'll start with hunting practice. Don't you want to catch your own prey? I want to fight, Broken Paw growled, tearing at a clump of ferns with unsheathed claws. Look how strong I am. I'm bigger than the other apprentices. They can do the hunting and the boring stuff around the camp. Let me do battle with the other warriors. Night Pelt's tail tip twitched. There are no battles to fight at the moment, Broken Paw. You'll have a chance to learn everything, but you need to go at the right pace. Don't be impatient. Broken Paw glared at his mentor for a heartbeat longer, then spun around and stalked away. Coughing, old fool, he muttered under his breath. Off you go back to camp, Yellow Fang told Running Paw. You can choose a piece of prey from the fresh kelp pile. Thanks, Yellow Fang, her apprentice exclaimed. And thanks for today, it was awesome. When he had scampered off, Yellow Fang padded over to Night Pelt. Couldn't you have shown Broken Paw a couple of moves? She meowed. He's right about being bigger than the other apprentices, and he seems to be getting bored. There's no reason he can't learn more quickly, is there? Night Pelt's eyes narrowed, and Yellow Fang realized she might have gone too far. I'm his mentor, and I'll decide when he learns to fight, the warrior retorted. Another coughing fit seized him. When it was over, he dipped his head to Yellow Fang. I'm sorry I snapped at you, he rasped. The tour of the territory wore me out. I'm going to rest. As he limped off, Yellow Fang stared after him with concern. He's looking old before his time and if his cough interferes with training, that won't be fair to Broken Paw. Emerging from the tunnel, Yellowfang spotted Cedar Star lying with his back against the warm clan rock, watching his clanmates feed. Yellowfang marched over to him, but as she approached, she passed a group of elders, stretched out in a sunny spot as they shared tongues and fresh kill. You don't get squirrels like you did when I was a warrior, dear leap me out. She had recently moved to the elder's den with Crowtail and Archeye. 
I could climb the highest tree in the forest after a squirrel, no trouble. Ah, but could you climb down again? Arch I asked with a morale of amusement. I'm not still up there, am I? Deerleaf snapped, slapping at him with her tail. Yellowfang noticed that Little Bird was listening with a look of fond indulgence, while Lizardfang shifted restlessly, pushing away his share of the squirrel. I'm too old to need feeding, he sighed. I'll be heading for Star Clan soon. Nonsense, Little Bird meowed. You've seasons in you yet, Lizard Fang. She clawed at a piece of squirrel and set it in front of him. Here, try this. It's lovely and fresh. Rowanberry caught it just for us. Affection for Little Bird surged over Yellow Fang, seeing the elder choosing the softest parts of the squirrel for her den mate to eat. She realized that Cedar Star was watching too. The clan is growing older, the leader commented softly to her, myself included. It's time to prepare new cats to take over the responsibilities of running the clan. Looking Yellowfang up and down, he added, Sage Whisker chose well in you, Yellowfang. I admit that I had some doubts at first. Oh no, Yellowfang thought. Does he know about Ragged Pelt? But you have more than proven your loyalty and skill, Cedar Star went on. Running Paw is lucky to have you as a mentor. It was mentoring that I wanted to talk to you about, Yellowfang meowed, taking the chance Cedar Star offered her. It's Night Pelt. His cough is still really bad, and I think it will hinder him being a mentor. Broken Paw is so strong and fit. He needs a mentor who can keep up with him, and I don't think Night Pelt can do that. Cedar Star gazed keenly at Yellowfang from narrowed eyes. I chose Night Pelt deliberately, he explained, because I think Broken Paw has lessons to learn in patience and selflessness. He is a cat who needs to choose between two paths, one that will serve his clan loyally, and one that will be less helpful. His words chilled Yellow Fang. Does he know about Mole Pelt's prophecy? Cedar Star rose to his paws, dipping his head slightly to show that the conversation was at an end. I will watch all of the apprentices to make sure they are progressing well, he meowed. There was a hint of warning in his voice as he added, Broken paw is not to be singled out at any cost. Reluctantly, Yellow Fang nodded. Tell me about the other medicine cats, Running Paw begged, bouncing around the medicine cat's den and getting under Yellowfang's paws. What for? You'll meet them soon, Yellowfang responded. Running Paw had been her apprentice for a quarter moon, and tonight he would go with her to his first full moon gathering. But I'm nervous. I won't know what to say. Please, Yellowfang. Okay, but let me sort these herbs at the same time. Yellowfang uncovered the first store and plunged her paw into the hole. Let's see... Goosefeather is the Thunderclan medicine cat. He's a bit strange. If he snaps at you, pay no attention. He doesn't mean anything. Thunderclan has a second medicine cat, Featherwhisker. He tends to ask too many questions about Shadowclan. Yellowfang turned to her apprentice and gave him a hard stare. Whatever you do, don't tell him anything. I won't, Yellowfang, Running Paw promised, eyes wide. Then there's Hawkheart of WindClan, Yellowfang went on. He can sound gruff, but he's a good cat. And Brambleberry of RiverClan. You'll like her. She's so kind and friendly. Yellowfang covered up the first hole, took more herbs out of another one, then laid everything out in front of Running Paw. These are for Lizardfang, she announced. He says he's always thirsty and he's losing a lot of weight. Now, tell me what these herbs are and why I'm giving them to him. Running Paw studied the herbs. That's sorrel, he mewed, pointing with one paw. That's to build up Lizard Fang's appetite. That one is brunette, to make him feel generally better and stronger. And the juniper berry... Oh, Star Clan, I've forgotten! He hesitated a moment, gave a sniff, then added, Is the juniper to strengthen his stomach? Very good, Yellow Fang purred. I'll take them to Lizardfang, if you like, Running Paw offered, and I'll make sure he has wet moss. Thanks, Running Paw, Yellowfang responded, 
Be as quick as you can, and meet me in the clearing. It's almost time to go. Her apprentice tucked the herbs into a neat leaf wrap and hurried off. Yellow Fang made sure the den was tidy, then followed him out. The cats who were going to the gathering had assembled around Cedar Star and Ragged Pelt in the middle of the clearing. Darkness had fallen, though the moon still hadn't risen above the trees. The sky was clear except for a few thin puffs of cloud. Yellow Fang strained to see Broken Paw. It took her a few moments to spot him. He wasn't with his mentor, like the other apprentices. She finally saw him standing beside Ragged Pelt, who was letting him stay there instead of sending him back to his proper place. Night Pelt just looked resigned. A flash of indignation seared through Yellow Fang. Why can't Night Pelt keep his apprentice under better control? Cedar Star waved his tail as the signal to move off. Yellow Fang looked around for Running Paw, who dashed to her side as she was waiting to go through the thorn tunnel. Lizard Fang's okay, he panted. He ate the herbs. Little Bird says she'll fetch him more water if he needs it. Great, Yellow Fang gave him a nod of approval. The clan trekked through the forest and along the tunnel that led to the patch of Shadow Clan territory on the far side of the Thunderpath. As they headed toward Four Trees, Broken Paw suddenly shot away from the rest of his clanmates, racing for the Thunder Clan border. Cedar Star halted, his tail lashing, and Ragged Pelt yelled, Broken Paw, get back here! Broken Paw paused on the border for a couple of heartbeats before padding back to the group. I was just making sure that the Thunder Clan scent marks were on the right side of the border, he explained. This is a vulnerable piece of territory. We can't neglect it. And getting to four trees is so important. Ragged Pelt nodded. True, but next time ask before you go dashing off. Yellow Fang noticed two or three of the older warriors echoing Ragged Pelt's approval, and her heart swelled with pride. Good call, Blackfoot purred. Yes, Russet Fur added. I can see you're going to make your clan strong, Broken Paw. You'll be a great warrior, Boulder agreed. The Shadow Clan cats were the first to arrive at Four Trees. By now, the moon was floating high above, shedding its silvery light over the meeting place. Running Paw halted at the top of the hollow, his eyes wide with awe as he gazed down. It's huge, he gasped. Yellow Fang, is that the great rock where the leaders stand? That's right, Yellow Fang told him. They, she broke off at a triumphant yowl from Broken Paw. He hurtled down the slope into the hollow, outstripping all the other cats, and dashed straight for the great rock. He was bunching his muscles to leap when Night Pelt called him back. You can't go up there, he scolded. That's only for the leaders. For a heartbeat, Broken Paul looked angry. Then he flicked his tail. One day, he promised. He raced off to explore the rest of the hollow. Before Yellow Fang and Running Paw were halfway down the slope, Broken Paw was back. More cats are coming, he announced. Pine Star appeared at the top of the hollow with the cats of Thunder Clan behind him. Yellow Fang spotted Feather Whisker and led Running Paw down to meet him. Greetings, mewed the Thunder Clan medicine cat. So you have a new apprentice. Welcome, he greeted Running Paw. I hope to see you at the Moonstone soon. Running Paw ducked his head. Thank you. Where's Goose Feather? Yellow Fang asked. Feather Whisker shook his head. Ill, I'm afraid, he replied. He can't be here tonight. I'm sorry, Yellow Fang began, then broke off as more cats poured into the clearing. Wind Clan and River Clan had arrived together, and Running Paw was looking a bit daunted. Stay by my side, Yellow Fang told him. We'll head for the Great Rock. The medicine cats always sit together at the bottom. Together, she and Running Paw squirmed through the crowd, followed by Feather Whisker. Brambleberry and Hawkheart welcomed Running Paw warmly, and Yellow Fang saw that another young cat was sitting with Hawkheart. This is my new apprentice, Hawkheart meowed. His name is Barkpaw. Oh, great, Running Paw exclaimed, sitting beside the brown tom. We can learn together. Bark Paul gave him a shy nod. I don't know much yet, he mewed. There are so many different herbs, I get confused. So do I, Running Paw admitted. I'm really good at clearing out old bedding, though. 
Glancing up at the great rock, Yellow Fang saw the four leaders looking down at their clans, ready to start the gathering. She silenced the apprentices with a wave of her tail. Cedar Star was the first of the leaders to step forward to the front of the great rock. Shadow Clan has good news to report, he meowed. We have made four new apprentices. Tangle Paw, Broken Paw, and Deer Paw will train as warriors, while Running Paw is apprenticed to Yellow Fang and will become a medicine cat. The cats in the clearing, especially the Shadow Clan cats, began to yowl the names of the new apprentices. Running Paw sat upright, eyes shining with pride and his whiskers quivering. Yellow Fang couldn't spot Broken Paw in the throng. The clan has been strengthening its borders, Cedar Star went on as the noise died down. We look forward to good hunting throughout New Leaf and Green Leaf. He gave a meaningful glance around at the other clans, then stepped back to give his place to Pine Star, who was followed by Hail Star of River Clan and Heather Star of Wind Clan. All the other leaders had good news to report, and Yellow Fang was impressed by how well they looked. Except Pine Star, she thought, wondering if anything was wrong with the Thunder Clan leader. He looks a bit listless and distracted. The Wind Clan leader announced Barkpaw's apprenticeship, and the cats yelled his name, too. Barkpaw sat beside Running Paw, looking very proud and embarrassed. As Heather Star continued to talk about plentiful rabbits and some fleet-footed young cats, Yellowfang heard a commotion break out at the edge of the clearing. Yowls and screeches drowned what the Wind Clan leader was trying to say. Craning her neck, Yellowfang spotted a familiar dark brown shape. Broken paw! He was wrestling with two young cats. From their skinny frames, Yellowfang guessed they were from Wind Clan. From his place on top of the great rock, Cedar Star leaped to his paws. His voice rang out above the turmoil. Broken paw! Stop fighting at once! This is a gathering! Turning to Heather Star, he dipped his head and added, I am sorry, Heather Star. He is a young apprentice, and it's his first time at a gathering. I will deal with him afterward. Heather Star dipped her head. No cat blames you, Cedar Star, she meowed with dignity. But be sure to remind your apprentices of the importance of keeping the truce at full moon. I shall speak to my own apprentices, too. Yellowfang's heart sank. Broken Paw had violated one of the most important rules of the warrior code, and in full view of the four clan leaders. The young cats had broken apart, but Yellowfang couldn't see what was happening now. Beside her, Running Paw was standing on the tips of his paws, craning to see over the heads of the crowd. What happened? he mewed. What was Broken Paw thinking? I'd guess he wasn't thinking at all, Feather Whisker muttered. Cats were shifting around, whispering. Eventually, Yellowfang heard Russetfur speaking to Ragged Pelt. Apparently, Broken Paw accused the Wind Clan apprentices of coming through the tunnel under the Thunderpath to steal prey. He jumped on them when they denied it. Running Paw had overheard Russetfur's words, too. What will happen to the gathering? He gasped, his eyes wide with shock. It was Featherwhisker who replied. We'll carry on, because the moon is still clear. If Star Clan wanted us to stop, they'd send clouds to cover the moon. Yellowfang glanced up, not at the moon, but at the glittering stars that surrounded it, scattered thickly across the sky. Are the warriors of Star Clan watching Broken Paw now? When Heather Star had finished her interrupted speech, the four leaders sprang down from the Great Rock. The cats below relaxed and started to share news with friends in other clans. But Cedar Star gathered the Shadow Clan cats around him with a flick of his tail. We're leaving, he growled. What? Blizzard Wing protested. Already? Yellow Fang saw Night Pelt padding up with Broken Paw beside him. The Black Warrior was clearly furious, but Broken Paw only looked sullen and defiant. One of our apprentices doesn't deserve to stay and meet others, Cedar Star glared at Broken Paw, then turned and led the way out of the hollow. Yellow Fang was walking just behind Cedar Star, with Running Paw at her side. Before they reached the top of the hollow, she was shoved roughly aside, almost losing her balance. Running Paw steadied her. When Yellow Fang turned to glare at the cat who had pushed her, she saw it was Ragged Pelt. The tabby Tom had fallen in beside Cedar Star. You didn't have to single out Broken Paw in front of all the clans like that, he challenged his leader angrily. Or scold him like that. 
There were two other apprentices involved. Broken Paul was only defending Shadow Clan honor. Your son broke the rules of the truce. Cedar Star's anger was colder and more controlled. I cannot let that happen. Ragged Pelt snorted. Loyalty and courage mean more than rules, he growled. But that kind of loyalty and courage starts battles, Yellowfang thought, with a flutter of alarm in her belly. Oh, Star Clan, please let Broken Paul learn to curb his temper. <laughs>